YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the final preseason game we watched last night between the Ravens and the Washington football team. And just to jump straight into it, Lamar Jackson made his preseason debut. Uh, he looked good. He looked smooth. He looked accurate. He threw outside the numbers like everybody says he can't do. Uh, but Lamar Jackson went out there and did his thing. Um, threw a beautiful deep pass. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful deep pass to uh, to Devin DuVernay. That was dropped. Um, he also threw a really nice pass to Mark Andrews. And it was just, oh, man, it, it, it was nice to see. Um, now, Lamar, it seemed as if he was uh, the Lamar Jackson from week one and week two of last year uh, against the Browns and the Texans because you would see he had some lanes to take off, but he was like, nope, not taking off. Nope. I save all that for the regular season. I ain't doing it right now. Uh, even though that pocket was breaking down because <laughs> that offensive was like, ooh, ooh. But it's, it's all good. Um, now, one thing with the offensive line. Um, they The run blocking, again, it, it continues to improve every week because they continue to add another starter to the offensive line every week. Uh, this week they added Ronnie Stanley because they had what looks like I think is going to be the starting lineup because you had Ronnie Stanley and you had uh, Ben Powers at left guard. That's been the, the biggest battle uh, in the offseason on the offensive line. Has been, Who's going to be the left guard? So you would think, especially because they put Lamar Jackson behind that offensive line, you have to think that, that those are going to be your starters. Ronnie Stanley, Ben Powers, Bradley Bozeman, uh, Kevin Zeitler, and Alejandro Villanueva. So I think that's the start in the offensive line because you put your starting quarterback and your starting running back behind all those guys. Uh, but, hey, we'll see. Uh, anyway, with Lamar Jackson, um, yeah, he, he, he looked good. He looked good in the, in the short sample size that we got to see uh, from him. Um, and it, it was unfortunate because the drive, it ended, well, it was obviously way more unfortunate with the J.K. Dobbins part, but that, that drive ended with the Verity missed field goal. So his stock went down. I, I think it may be turn, turning into a conditional draft pick trade for him. Or maybe teams may just like wait it out because they know the Ravens aren't going to keep him anyway. So I don't think a team, now I don't think a team is going to be in a rush to sign I mean, to trade for Jake Verdi. But, hey, we'll see because EDC is EDC. So he may find some way somehow to get something. So we'll just hold out hope for it. Um, but back to the drive and J.K. Dobbins. Now, uh, I'm recording this video. It's Sunday at 826 a.m. Um, so we haven't heard the official word on J.K. Dobbins yet. Uh, so just know that when you see this video, it's being done before uh, we find out what happened to J.K. Uh, but we should find that out any any time now, any time now. Uh, so that's it, it's unfortunate. It sucks. And I know it's been a lot of people. They say, oh, man, the Ravens should have never been playing J.K. anyway. No, it's a third preseason game. They were playing the starters for one drive like they've been doing for offense and defense for a lot of guys. They played them out there one drive. OK, you're done. And that's it. So I, I'm not one of those people, oh, man, they shouldn't have played the starters. No, things happen. It sucks. It's unfortunate. It was terrible. But it, it happens. I, I don't think we can, We should look back, oh, man, Raven should have never played those. No, it, it, it's, it's fine. Uh, so hopefully J.K., uh, hopefully he won't be out too long. Um, I'm thinking like a month, maybe a month and change. But we just got to see what happens. Uh, the, the wide receivers. Just to go position by position. Uh, the wide receivers, again, Devin DuVernay, he dropped a, a perfectly thrown deep pass from Lamar last night. Um, and it was just, it, it was unfortunate. Because that thing was beautiful. Um, but he just, he dropped it. Uh, some of the other wide receivers, Benjamin Victor, he had a good game. Caught him a touchdown. Shout out to Tyler Huntley. And I guess we can kind of transition from Lamar to Tyler Huntley since uh, everything after that first drive was Tyler Huntley. He was out there for the entire, the, the entire game pretty much, um, and he did his thing. He looked more and more comfortable. Uh, the decision-making was on point. He did not throw any almost interceptions either. He did not throw any. Um, so that was a, a beautiful thing to see. I know some people have been like, oh, well, Tyler Huntley, he's just playing against backups. How, how do you expect him to look? Well, again, I say to that, that, uh, hello, uh, Tyler Huntley, if, if he wasn't looking good against those backups, then we'd be having another conversation. And like my guy Thomas Morgan said last night, uh, those backups, they are still NFL players. So, yes, they are part of the 1% in the world uh, that makes it that far. 
Uh, so Tyler Huntley, happy for him. He went out there through four touchdowns. Uh, even had the Russian touchdown, so he had him a Lamar game. Proche even said last night, he was like, man, if you put a number eight on the back of Huntley's jersey, he said you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. You And, and in a lot of cases, you wouldn't. With their demeanor, their attitude, they, they are twins. Twins. If Tyler Huntley even put the helmet up a little bit and showed the braids, they still twins. Now, Lamar ain't got the beard, so they ain't twins right there, but just the way that they carry themselves on the field, especially when they get control and they start, like, moving – Oh yeah, they can they could be on fire. Um, now their throwing motion is is a little different, but either way, man, they they both go out there and they have fun with it. Um, so Tyler Huntley last night, uh, one of his touchdowns was to Benjamin Victor. Benjamin, Benjamin Victor, he did his thing last night. If I think Benjamin Victor makes this team, if Ravens keep seven receivers, if they don't keep seven, he doesn't make it. If they do keep seven, he's the seventh one because the other six are locks. You got, again, uh, Bateman, Hollywood, Watkins, DuVernay, Prochet, and Tylen Wallace. Those are your locks to me. Um, and then that seventh spot is up for grabs. Right now, Miles Boykin is looking like injured reserve. Um, Deion Kane, I think he's, he's gone. I think last night, and it was a tough road for him because he had done, done some things in practice and whatnot and training camp and all that, but then he got injured, so he was out for so long. So last night was his only shot, and he just, those two drops that he had, both deep passes too. Um, maybe they, I, I, it's, and it's tough because the, the op, it's all about opportunity. I was going to say, maybe they should have just tried to get him involved in the short passing game a little bit, get that confidence up. But when you have lim a limited amount of chances, it's tough, man. It's tough because everything you do gets blown up that much more when your chances are so few. So the fact that he dropped both of those two deep, excuse me, both of those two deep passes, I think that that sealed his fate, man. And I, I think that'll be a wrap for him uh, on the roster. Uh, practice squad, maybe, but I think that that'll be it. Um, James Proche. <laughs> James Proche. My guy, first off, shout out to Tyler Huntley for that beautiful throw. Uh, and the pump fake first. And then the way he threw it was just so effortless, man. It looked like it, it, was just, it just looked too easy for him on that pass. But anyway, threw it up. And that's the James Proche that we had heard about so much. That's the James Proche that when you pull up his highlights from college, from what, SMU, I think, uh, that's the Proche that we know. Small guy, short guy, short receiver, but plays big. He plays a lot bigger than he is. The 50-50 ball, that's him all day, and that's exactly what that was. He got it, and he looked at that receiver. Now, James Proche was looking up at that receiver, telling him to get big. I don't know how you could tell somebody to get big if you're smaller than them, but James Proche did it. And I wasn't mad at it. We, we loved it. Loved that seeing that attitude out of James Prochet. We had never seen that before. Well, because last year he wasn't involved at all on offense. So this year we'll see. We'll see how things go. But that was really nice because we had been hearing about James Prochet. Oh, training camp. He's killing it. He's doing this. He's doing that. James Prochet is catching everything. But then when it came to being on the field, it's like we, we hadn't really seen anything. So to see him do that. Beautiful. And then Tylen Wallace, somebody who we hadn't been hearing anything about during training camp. And then the first preseason game, he has the uh, the, the, the muff punt. Um, and then the second preseason game, he he drops a touchdown uh, or maybe the defender knocked it out. Either way, he missed an opportunity on that. But in the second preseason game, he did have those two catches and one. He got a lot of yak on it. So that was a nice confidence booster. But for him to get his first touchdown, that was nice for him heading into the season. So, Tylen Wallace, I'm, I was very, very happy for him uh, with that. That was a beautiful thing. Um, another touchdown went to a tight end. It's, 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 it's so nice to talk about all these touchdowns, man. I, I love it, man. But another touchdown went to a tight end, Eric Tomlinson. And Ty, Tyler Huntley, he ran to his right, threw across his body to his left. The pass was perfect, accurate, all that good stuff. Touchdown, Eric Tomlinson. Tomlinson is somebody who I think the Ravens could uh, release initially. Um, but then I think they could end up placing Nick Boyle. Oh, Nick Boyle right now, he's on PUP. So they might not even place it because in order to be placed on IR, I believe he would have to um, get off the physically unable to perform list. So he would have to pass the physical, and then they carry him on the roster on IR. But right now he hasn't passed his physical yet. So it may be PUP for him. 
So he wouldn't count on the active roster yet. So Eric Tomlinson, he right now is looking like he's going to make the roster in my eyes initially. Um, well, something else that they could do, they could release Eric Tomlinson if they want to just clear that roster spot and they could bring him back after week two. Because if they bring him back week one, uh, then his salary for the entire year will be guaranteed. But if they bring him back after week one and week two, then none of his salary, uh, it wouldn't be guaranteed. He will be a week to week guy. So I could see the Ravens doing that. Josh Oliver, who had a quiet game last night, he's going to make the team. Um, so you, you could have you could go into week one with Mark Andrews and Josh Oliver. A little bit risky, but with you having all those receivers, and they could keep it. In that case, they could keep seven. But see, it's, it's just so much tricky stuff that could go on with this roster. And we're going to try to do a roster prediction video when we get a chance. I don't know when that will be because um, I know things are going to be crazy busy. Ravens could start releasing people. They could start it today um, because they got to get from 80 to 53 by Tuesday at 4 p.m. So it is going to be very busy. Make sure you have your notifications turned on because this this could get pretty wild. It will be pretty wild. It's going to be a lot of moves happening. Uh, so y'all just stay ready. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Um, so we'll see what happens with Eric Thomason and the uh, and the tight ends. Um, like I said, Josh Oliver, quiet, quiet game. Tony Paul John, um, haven't, hadn't seen anything from him since that first preseason game. I think he caught like a pass or something. Did he catch it? I, I forget, but he's been super, super quiet. He hasn't even really been out there too much. Um, and now we can transition to the, uh, the fullbacks. Pat Ricard was out there for a little bit. Uh, but Ben Mason, Ben Mason, he got a little more, uh, carries than expected, um, but he came out there, and, and, and he was a little bruiser. I still think he's an IR stash, um, but he came out there and did his thing. Because I, I just do not see them carrying two fullbacks on the roster at all. I don't. Um, so, but, but to the running backs now. The running backs, of course, we talked about J.K. And he had looked good before the injury. Because I know a lot of people was, was like concerned about J.K. Oh, since he hadn't really done anything in preseason. Yeah, I'm like, hold up, it's preseason. He, he'll be fine. He ain't had no preseason last year, and look how he did. So J.K. would be fine. But um, besides J.K. and the injury, of course, uh, Tyson Williams, lock, lock. He is a lock. And I think depending on the severity of the injury to J.K., that uh, McCrary, he could be another guy that could make the roster because of whatever's going to happen with J.K. Dobbins. We'll, we'll just have to see. Um, but Tyson Williams, that dude, he is, he is on the roster. Now, with McCrary, if he makes the roster, uh, seeming like with J.K., if and when he makes the roster, only thing I don't like about McCrary, we got to change that number. You, you, you will not be wearing number 18 as a running back for the Ravens. No. <laughs> we got to get rid of that 18, man. I know they, they, they showed on numbers, especially in the 20s and stuff, and even in the 30s. But we're we going to find you a number, and you, you're going to be good to go after that. But that 18, that got to go, my friend. That has got to go. We love you. But we don't love the 18. I don't know running. But anyway, um, out there looking like a fast punter or something. Uh, but McCrary, he had to take over the majority of this game. Because uh, after J.K. Dobbins went down, they were like, look. They were like, Tyson Williams, um, we know that you made the roster. So, come on. You, you're going to chill for the rest of the night. They gave him a couple more carries. Then that was it. That was it. Um, so, it was the McCrary show for the rest of the night. And I love, love, love. Like, this guy, like, it, it just made me so happy and excited and just like, man, I, 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 I appreciated so much his decision making. This guy makes such smart cuts. He has very, very good vision and he knows how to make the most of his opportunities. There were some plays where he did get tackled in the backfield. He had absolutely no blocking, no lane, no nothing. But there, was some, there were also some plays where he could have lost like two yards. It could have been no gain. But he made a couple of cuts like, and, and, and he ended up turning nothing into something. And he did that throughout the entire night, man. I, this guy's got vision, man. He's got vision. I, I loved it, man. And I was thinking, man, imagine him go behind a starting offensive line. Oh, boy. I just, it, it, it was nice to see, man. So, shout out to McCrary. Um, whether it's with the Ravens, whether it's with somebody else, he'll get an opportunity for sure. Uh, Ravens going to figure this thing out, though. Again, everything uh, depends on J.K. Dobbins, who, again, we, we still waiting on it. Still, still waiting on it. Um, but anyway, 
those were the running backs. And, yeah, I guess that's all of the offense. Shout out to Greg Roman. I know a lot of people are like, man, that must have been Hollywood out there calling them plays because they kept taking deep shots. Uh, but the offense, I, I did love it because with Lamar in his limited time, but with Tyler Huntley, like the whole time, they were throwing that ball down the field. They were throwing that ball down the field. They were taking their shots consistently. And we loved it. We loved it. Because, yeah, you everything ain't a deep pass. We know that. Sometimes you got to work your way up to it. You got to build up to it. But the way that they were taking their shots last night, yes, good, 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 good. So it was a nice, nice momentum going into the regular season uh, with how they operated last night and did their thing. So it, it was nice to see. Uh, special teams, Verity, like we said, Verity stock probably went down a little bit. Uh, ain't nobody going to be in a rush to trade for Verity. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. He did kick and punt. So it seemed like Ravens trying to give Verity the uh, the care Vedvik uh, treatment. To where they show like, hey, he can do multiple things. That makes his value go up. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, and he did have the uh, extra point blocked. Now, see, that's tough because I don't know if the, the ball was too low, if he kicked it too low to try to get more, uh, um, to make it go farther. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was just a good play by their special teams unit. Maybe it was a bit of both. I don't know. But um, that's unfortunate for kickers when their kicks are blocked because who do you put the blame on? Uh, it, it's very tough because you could put it on the blockers up front, that offensive line, uh, or do you put it on whatever. But, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be in a rush to trade for Jake Verity now. But we'll see. Again, you never know. Uh, punt return. Tylen Wallace, to me, he did look uncomfortable there. He was very indecisive. Um, but, again, he's a rookie. He's a rookie. That's what the preseason for. Try it out. Uh, Proche, we know Proche is comfortable back there. He was there for the uh, majority of last year till Duvernay took over. Um, he's always going to catch the catch the ball back there, but he he's not going to get us no punt return for a touchdown. He's not going to get us big yards on a punt return unless the blocking was better than perfect because he doesn't have that speed like that. Uh, Devin Duvernay. Him too. We know what he can do as a punt returner. My preference would be to have Devin Duvernay back there, but I think Devin Duvernay will be more involved on offense than Proche will be. So I think they'll keep Proche back there, but we'll see. Because me, I was saying it last night in the stream, I would rather somebody, even though Devin, Devin Duvernay, his hands, they solid. Tylen Wallace too. But I would rather somebody be back there who may be a little more, have a little more risk of possibly fumbling the ball or something. I would rather have somebody that's explosive back there. Uh, rather than just a safe guy who's not going to really get many yards at, at, at punt return. So I would rather that chance to have a punt return pop off for a touchdown or something. Because it reminds me of Jacoby Jones. Jacoby Jones has some, some punts that he dropped, some kickoffs that he dropped. So And, and sometimes they resulted in, in bad plays. Where Jacoby, I forget which game it was, that 2012 year. Jacoby Jones, they, they kicked it off to, oh, playoff game against the Broncos. Look at that. So when everything on the line, Jacoby dropped one. But he certainly made up for it that game, I tell you that. But anyway, uh, the kickoff, Jacoby Jones dropped it in the end zone, like bobbled it, and then he ran out, and then I think he got to like the, the five or seven yard line. So those things happen. But again, Jacoby Jones, he was a huge reason for all the Ravens' success that season. He got kickoff returns against the Raiders. Uh, did he get No, not the Raiders. Against the Cowboys. I think the, I think the Raiders, too. Uh, yeah, the Raiders, the, the, the Steelers, the... Um, and of course, obviously in the Super Bowl, um, he just he's he was doing his thing all year, and I know I'm I'm missing some. Um, so shout out to Jacoby Jones too. But I would that's that's my point. I would rather somebody that has that potential back there as a punt returner, kick returner, rather than somebody who's just gonna be safe. That's why I really like y'all remember Janarian Grant? I want to say that was 2015. No, no, that was 2018. I don't even remember what year. No, it was 2018. Yeah, because I think it was Lamar's first game. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think he was an undrafted free agent, and he came in Lamar's rookie year, I think. Y'all let me know if I'm wrong, though. But Janarian Grant, that was him. This dude was shifty. He'd make anybody miss. But he had fumbling problems. And then the first game of the season in 2018 versus the Bills, I believe, it was raining like crazy. And he dropped a couple of them. And then Ravens ended up cutting him. That was a wrap. And I never heard from him again. Never heard from him again in the NFL. I just realized that. Wow, that's crazy. NFL is really not for long. 
That's why when, when people be saying, oh, this player sucks, that player sucks, that player's terrible. No, they're not. <laughs> like For people that say that, you got to realize what it takes to make it to the NFL, man. It's 1% of people. That's it. 1% of people make it. And for you to say, oh, this guy sucks, he's terrible, he's this, he... no, they don't. Yeah, they may have had a bad day, they may have had an off day, an off play or whatnot, but they are not terrible players. So, anyway, um, on defense. Now, defense, I told y'all last night, I, 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 really, I didn't really pay attention to people much on defense like that. I did a lot of focus on offense, as you could tell, but... Defense, no, not really. I did see a way get some nice pressure. I know people were telling me all night, oh, man, they holding away. They holding him, holding him, holding him. So that's a good thing because that means he scares them. He put that pressure on them uh, to where they got to hold him. So that's a good thing. Shout out to him. Didn't see Bowser that much. Think he was thinking about his after party last night. Um, Dalen Hayes, same stuff. Same stuff. Just continues to do his thing. That little dip move, man, that's his thing. That's his finishing move. That dip. Uh, so shout out to Daylon Hayes. I'm, I'm man. I'm just happy, man. I'm, I'm excited for this pass rush. Somebody said Justin Houston was out there early. I didn't see him, but I don't know. Um, cornerbacks. Marcus Peters was out there for a tiny amount of time. Anthony Avery was, I think, too. Uh, but last night, a lot of Nigel Warrior. He he's making a roster. Nigel Warrior. He already made the roster. Uh, he made some really nice tackles, man. That was my favorite part about Nigel Warrior last night was his tackles. I didn't see too much of Ardarius Washington. I did see Brandon Stevens. He made a couple of plays. He almost got a pick. Um, who else? Chris Westry. He got bombed on one play. It's like he, he gives up a big, a big catch per game. Um, but for the most part, he, he does his thing. Uh, so I think he'll make the roster as well. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Geno Stone was out there. Um... And, I, yeah, I did see him involved. I did see the 26 round the ball a little bit. Uh, Patrick Queen, he was out there for a little bit. Malik Harrison was out there for a little bit longer, but not too long. Um, but, yeah, defense, I'm sorry. I just – a lot of defense I just – I did not really pay attention to like that in detail. But <laughs> yeah, I see that uh, they didn't have any turnovers last night. And this is something that we talked about. They, they didn't have any turnovers last night, but they only gave up three points. They only gave up three points. Now, remember that, that New Orleans game? That New Orleans game against the Saints, they had like 50 turnovers, man. I think they had, what, like six? Six turnovers. But the game came down to the wire. They gave up all them points. Now, the past two games, the turnovers been way down. But the points, they've been way up. What did, didn't the Panthers get three? I think the Panthers got three. Uh, and then Washington football team, they got three. So, yeah. So, defense been holding it down. I, I will take it all day. Now, we love our interceptions. We love our interceptions. We love our fumbles. We love all of that stuff. But I will take them not having many turnovers all day if they only given up a tiny amount of points. Because that just makes it so much easier for everybody. Like, if the Ravens would have scored these past two games, combined if the Ravens would have scored 14 points, they would have won. They would have won. If they scored 14 points, they would have won. So it's that's beautiful, man. And I know it's preseason, but still, it's preseason. Still a game. And again, the, the 20 game win streak, that is beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Some people are going to say, oh, it's just preseason, man. It doesn't mean anything. Now, why it doesn't, it doesn't count, count? Like, John Harbaugh got his name in the, in the history books now, though. I mean, he already been in there, but he got his name in the history books of something else now, too. But. It certainly counts uh, because that when you think about it, like a preseason game, you you want t to win twenty in a row. We talked about this last night. Like winning two in a row, okay, cool. Winning about three or four in a row, all right, cool. Winning five, six, it's like hold up, all right. Well, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Seven and nine, it's like wait, wait, wait. Oh, we we got we got something going here. We, we got something going. We, we've been killing this thing for the past couple of years. Then from 9 to like 11, 12, it's like, whoa, we, a oh, hold up. We, we, could, we could make history. And then from 12 to 15, it's like, oh, yo, we, we, we got it. We got it. They start swag surfing together. And then it goes from, from 15 to 16 to 17, and it's like, oh, we ready 
there, your boys. We right there. And then 18, it's like, oh, then 19, it's like, whoa, we, we tied the record. Then 20, let's go. They did that. Like, that's crazy. And you're playing these games uh, with backups most of the time. And you're still winning. You're still winning. So that is a great feat, man. That's a great record. And that, that lets you know something that they prepare. They prepare for the preseason, and they don't play no games in preseason. Now, like I said, we need to do once the Ravens got to make the playoffs first, but come playoffs, they need, we need to tell them, hey, these playoff games, these are really preseason games, y'all. We need to convince Harbaugh and them that the playoffs are preseason games. Super Bowl is ours. If we can do that, team keep it clean, let's do that. If Ravens make the playoffs, which we expect them to, but if Ravens make the playoffs, we got to all convince Harbaugh and them, say, hey, it, this is a preseason game now. We got to find a way to do it. We're going to have to get creative, but we're we going to make it happen. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's that, man. Ravens did it, so they go into the season, into this season again. I mean, they've been going into season since, what, 2016 with this undefeated preseason uh, schedule. And 2016, no, they didn't make the playoffs. 2017, no, they didn't make the playoffs. 2018, they weren't supposed to make the playoffs, but then insert Lamar, and then 18, 19, and 20, they made the playoffs. So the preseason streak is not really indic indicative of anything, um, but it's still a beautiful thing, man. So shout out to Harbaugh and them. Shout out to because this has not just been with Greg Roman. This has not just been with Wink. This has been with uh, Dean Pease. Uh, this has been with uh, Marty Morningweg. This has been so. Th it's it's been with some old guys too. Uh, this has been with Flacco. This has been uh, with I think Bren Renner. Um, this has been with, uh, who else? Who are some of the other quarterbacks that were there? Obviously, Lamar. Um, mm, and obviously now Tyler Huntley, too. But it's been a lot of people that have contributed to this. That, that, a lot of times we forget that. It's been a lot of people because a lot of players, obviously, every year, they contribute to this. So this is uh, really good. So, again, yeah, shout out to Harbaugh. Y'all know I don't always agree with everything that he does. Um, but you, you gotta, gotta give credit where credit is due. You have to, have to, no matter how much you like somebody, no matter how much you dislike somebody, uh, you gotta give credit where credit is due. And Harbaugh has had these guys ready for that preseason. Now let's flip it to postseason. Uh, but anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Uh, again, just a quick reminder. This video is being, is, is being recorded before we got official news on the JK Dobbins situation. Um, maybe by the time you see this video, we'll have already gotten it. So we'll talk about that in a separate video when we get that. Or well, maybe you'll see this video before. Either way, uh, we'll keep you all updated. And again, uh, like I did say, too, I, I am going to try. I don't know when it, it will happen because things are going to be moving like crazy. But I will try to do a 53-man uh, roster prediction video when we get a chance to. Maybe... All right, I ain't going to talk too much because I, I, I got some plans for it if we are able to do it. But I ain't going to talk too much. I just make it happen when we make it happen. Anyway, I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all team. Keep it clean. Uh, and hopefully, like J.K. Dobbins is, but not for too long, we out.